This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps professionals find fulfilling careers. I believe that lifelong learning is the key to a successful career. And to get a better job, you need to learn the job hunting skills that will help you find the role of your dreams. That's why we're here today. Every week on Find Your Dream Job, I interview a different career expert. We discuss the tools and tactics you need to find the work you want. This week, I'm talking to Laura Pepping about how to turn your connections into your job search champions. You've heard it a million times. You need to ask others for help when you look for work. So you start talking with people about your search. Everyone is polite and friendly, but nothing happens after these conversations. How can you move the people you meet to help you? Our guest today says you need to know what you want, explain it clearly, and get others to talk about themselves. Want to learn more? Listen in now at the MaxList studio as I interview Laura Pepping about how to turn your connections into your job search champions. Laura Pepping is the founder and president of Plum Coaching and Consulting. Laura's company helps clients around the world with job search, career coaching, resumes, and LinkedIn services. Every member of Plum's 13-person team has been a recruiter and knows how hiring works. Laura joins us today from Seattle, Washington. Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for being on the show. Now, tell me, Laura, what difference can good champions make in a job search? Well, they make all the difference. So we believe, and I believe, uh, after doing this for quite a while now, I don't want to age myself, but um, having done both recruiting and job search coaching, uh, we believe there are five different methodologies of job search. And one of the most critical and most important are finding those champions, the people in your community of connections. And you'll notice I don't say network. I actually cringe when I hear the word network because it's such it's such a nebulous term. Because Mac, as much as you may like me and I like you, your network of people down in Portland are not necessarily going to buy in to being my connections and my champions. You might because we're connected uh, directly one-to-one. So networking to me is a very arduous term, whereas champions or connections or community of connections is a much more uh, reasonable way to bite into job search. So they're a very important, they're one-fifth of our methodology, which is a pretty significant component of job search. Okay. Well, let's talk about connections. When you're working with people and you say, let's identify your connections and turn them into champions, who are the connections that you're talking about, Laura? Well, I actually like uh, to use this analogy, and it's a pretty simplistic one. If you were to call somebody, I, I don't know if everyone remembers that. You could pick up the phone and use it to actually call people. Um, but I remember. If you, <laughs> do you remember that, I Matt? do. I do, Laura. <laughs> It's old timey, but um, you don't have to have a curly Q mustache to use your phone in that way. Um, But you can, uh, if you think about the people who would pick up the phone when they saw your number come up, or they would um, be brightened up by the fact that you were calling or return your call, which is also very important. If those people are responding in that way, those are your connections. Though That's your community. And they may not respond immediately just due to various circumstances, but that's the lens which you can look through to identify and think about who is in your community or who are those champions. Um, they can also be, by the way, um, they can be a whole 
range of people. They can be former colleagues. They can be friends. They can be people on the sideline at soccer games, people who come to me and say, I have no community. I go, do your kids play sports? Yes. Well, that entire sideline of people, those are people in your community. Are you, they can be your champions as well as family. I mean, we sometimes forget that if your family can't be your champion, who can be? And I've actually leveraged my own husband, my sister, my cousins uh, to serve as champions for me. Okay. So these are, are people who are part of your life. Uh, they may be part of your professional life, but uh, also in your neighborhood, maybe in your faith community, uh, your kids, sports leagues, people who with whom you have a personal connection of some kind, aren't they? Right. And, and the thing that I love about the idea of champions being those connections is that it's very authentic. And there's I think all of us have had a situation where we reached out to someone that wasn't in that ecosystem of connections or champions, and it felt a little awkward. But if you look at those people who are showing up as your champions or are your connections, they're like the low-hanging fruit of job search because they want to be your hero. Well, let's talk about connections and Because you can have both connections, Laura, but they may not become champions even when you have that personal tie. How do you uh, you take people and inspire them to become your champion during your job search? That's great. Well, I like to tell everyone that our clients that people want to be a hero. And here's what I mean by that. If someone approaches me and tells me they're exploring the job market, and let's say I'm going to choose something they're in marketing, and I know of someone else who is hiring for marketing uh, professionals, or I know of a position that I've seen posted somewhere, LinkedIn is one of my favorite tools. Not that LinkedIn has the most number of job descriptions job postings, but I'll just use LinkedIn for an example. If I have a connection to someone who's looking for an employee and I know of someone who is exploring the job market and I can make that connection happen, then I become a hero in two different ways. I become a hero to the person who's looking I become a hero to the person who's trying to fill the position. And I feel pretty sweet about myself. (laughs) I feel pretty good about myself. And people love that feeling. There's a currency, as it were, of how those connections make you feel. And most people want to feel that goodness of making those connections. And if you are a job seeker and you think of it in those ways, look at it that way, then approaching people, it what becomes really important is you're not imposing, you are just letting the world know you're in it by reaching out to specific people and um, like a Laura, like a Mac, like uh, so many people in their ecosystem or among their community, and being very clear about what it is they're looking for, or what they're exploring, and giving those people the opportunity to be a hero. Okay. So think uh, as you begin your search about the people with whom you have those personal ties who are your connections. They're not part of this larger network, but they mm-hmm. know you and uh, feel a connection to you. And then know what you want so that when you're making choices about who to approach, it's in pursuit of the goal that you've either set or you want to explore. Is that a a good summary, Laura? Yes. Clarity of, of message is probably one of the most critical parts of this effort. And what I like to tell clients is, and all of our coaches tell our clients the exact same thing, that if you don't have that clarity, it makes people a little more resistant to um, 
helping you. It puts an obstacle in the way of that conversation because they don't really know what it's for. They don't know how long it's going to take. Your job as a job as a, a job seeker is making things as easy as possible for the person who you're asking to help you or assist you or guide you or give you information. And if you're not clear as to what it is you're exploring or what you're pursuing or even being very crisp about your own message, you are putting an obstacle in the face of the person who who potentially could be your champion. So have a very clear ask for a meeting as you would, I think, for any business conversation. Now, Laura, what do you say to the listeners who say, I don't know what I want, and I'm hoping that if I have a conversation with you or or someone else who is a connection of mine, it'll help me clarify that. As far as trying to identify what you want to say about yourself, there is a very simplistic way to do it. And that's by taking what the market says it wants and leveraging those message in service to you. So what do I mean by that? Well, the exercise that we have all of our clients engage in is what we call job shopping. And the nice thing about it is there's no commitment. You don't have to buy anything. But the wonderful thing about job shopping is you go out and you look at what's in the marketplace and you gather the data about what is interesting and sparks your interest. What what is engaging to you? What looks interesting? And where does your experience overlap the kinds of things that are interesting to you and where the intersection happens between that job description and your experience is squarely what you're looking it's that's what you're looking for that x marks the spot and then you're able to be much more in um clear there's great clarity around what you want okay why don't we pause right there laura because i want to explore this more going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll continue our conversation with Laura Pepping about how to turn your connections into your job search champions. Six seconds. According to some estimates that's how long a hiring manager spends reading your resume. Go ahead count to six. That's not much time is it? But here's the irony. Even in that short period a simple mistake on your resume stands out. And if you make an error, you can almost always count on getting a rejection letter. We've had more than 3,000 employers post jobs on MaxList. And the hiring managers we talk with say they spot the same resume errors again and again and again. That's why we created our new digital guide. It's called Don't Make These Eight Killer Resume Mistakes. Get your free copy today. Go to maxlist.org slash resume mistakes. We show you the biggest blunders employers see. Does your resume have one? Find out today. Go to maxlist.org slash resume mistakes. Avoid these errors and you could increase the odds you'll get the job offers you want. Visit maxlist.org slash resume mistakes. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the MaxList studio. I'm talking with Laura Pepping. She's the founder and president of Plum Coaching and Consulting, and she joins us today from Seattle. So when we stopped, Laura, you were talking about job shopping. And I love this idea because it seems like a great way to help people get clarity about what it is they want, which, as we both know from talking to a lot of job seekers, and I certainly had this experience in my own career, it can be hard to figure out what you want to do next. So you uh, tell us more about this process. Uh, you said it starts with looking at job descriptions in uh, with positions that interest you? Oftentimes, people will start with, I want a great company that honors my um, talents, opportunity for growth. Um, they'll name a whole wish list of what it is they want. But if you're a recruiter like me and a candidate says that to me, 
it just frustrates me. It just says, well, you're not being clear because I don't really know what the job is that you want. So I don't know what to do with you. Because as you mentioned in my introduction, my co- the coaches that work with Plum, including myself, are former recruiters. And we've experienced this where candidates approach us and say, I can do anything and here are all the things that I want. And my perspective as a recruiter and as a hiring manager is, no, 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 you need to tell me what it is that you do, be very clear about the type of role you want, and then I can figure out where to put you. And our, and then we're going to talk about where your experience overlaps with the positions that are of interest to you. So we want to, we want to empower our clients to more effectively, to appeal to hiring managers and recruiters by having that clear, crisp, articulate message. If you just say, if you have this nebulous message around what it is that you do, what you like and what you're looking for, that actually doesn't serve you. What we look at is what really exists, what jobs actually truly exist to create our own message that's going to align with the marketplace. Okay. So that's a great way to figure out what you want and what the market is looking for. Let's talk about connections. You've identified the people who have either insights or, or experiences uh, with the kind of positions that you want and you're ready to approach your connections. How do you, how do you recommend that uh, a listener who meets with a connection, start a meeting, uh, start a conversation about uh, their search? Well, actually, I'm going to back it up even further okay. from the starting of the conversation in the coffee shop or over the phone or via Skype. I'm going to back up and say, first of all, before you ever talk to anyone, think about that you are in listening mode right now. And that when you approach someone to talk to them, they're, you're going to go into it with a curiosity about what they have to say, rather than thinking about how you're going to push out your message. Don't think of that as a sales opportunity for you. Think about it as a listening opportunity to open the mind and heart of the person that you're going to be speaking with. And there's nothing that people love to talk about more than themselves. And when you allow someone to talk about themselves, what ends up happening is they start opening up to you and what you have to say about yourself. So what's really critical then is that when you make a date with someone to talk about what they see in the marketplace, what's happening in their industry or their company, that when that person is done talking about themselves and they say, oh gosh, there's only five to 10 minutes of time that I have left. Tell me, Laura, what are you looking for? What are you exploring? And that's when you have this really buttoned up message that can be in one paragraph. Well, Mac, I have spent 20 years in HR and I am exploring HR opportunities in the manufacturing space because I have labor relations in my background and I'm looking for a senior director of HR in the manufacturing space. You're that crisp and that clear. So you're prepped before you even go into the conversation. When you do request one of those meetings, I always say, you have to be appreciative and you have to be flexible and you have to be intentional so that when you reach out to someone, you don't just say, oh, you know, Roberta, you and I um, have been friends for many years on the sidelines at soccer and I know you work for REI and I've always been intrigued by retail and REI and may I set up a 20-minute phone call just to hear about what your experience has been at REI. And so you're really intentional, you're really clear, and you can also add, and I'm exploring the marketplace, and that retail space is something I'd like to investigate. And then you also add into that email, and here are dates, some dates, do any of these work for you? 
And the beauty of that is that if that person can't make any of those dates, they typically will make a date with you at a time that does work for them. So you've set that up. And please stop me, Mac, if I'm oh, going no. too deep. I, I, no, I, I love that you're describing uh, how people can dis- lay out what they want to do and where they want to go. And I, I'm a big believer as well in the power of listening and how that can help build connections, but also help you learn. So I have to ask, because I know our listeners are wondering this too, once you give the person you meet a chance to share their story and talk about their industry and company and their their professional experience that's of interest to you, and and they ask about your own uh, job search and your goals, what happens next, Laura? How do you <laughs> turn uh, that conversation and uh, inspire this connection to become a champion? And what should you ask for? And what might you expect them to do for you? That's a great question. What I always tell people is if you're doing a great job listening, it's sort of like a salesperson. When you go in to buy a car, the salesperson's job is to really, really listen to you and what your triggers are and what's important to you. So as my clients are listening or as I'm the person sitting down with a Mac and and I'm listening to you, I'm picking up cues as to what's really important and what message I should share with you that's going to um, enable you to help me more effectively. So if you and I are having a conversation, I'm talking to you about the communications industry and you tell me what's really important is is uh, digital marketing. I don't know. I'm not that's not my area of expertise. And I say, oh gosh, you know, Mac, Digital marketing is something that I'm quite familiar with. I do, I've done a lot of uh, digital marketing for my own firm. It's really intriguing to me. And I'm just wondering, is there someone else within um, within the space that you're in that you think is really important who, who, who would find it um, valuable for me to meet with and might find it valuable for them to meet with me? So the ask is really important. But making sure that you making it you make it very neat and tidy and apparent and easy for the person that you're meeting with to articulate your message to the connection that they can make for you. Okay. So, so that's how you sort of set it up, and then there's process after that as okay. well. Well, let's talk about that. Uh, you you ask for an introduction and you walk out the room knowing that the person perhaps has suggested that uh, they'll put you in touch with one or two or even three other people. What happens after that meeting, Laura, Uh, particularly if you don't hear back from the person you met with, uh, uh, how should people stay in touch or follow up? That again is a a, a sort of a mindset that I, or or a message that I think everyone needs to, to uh, embrace, which is, Asking the person, how would you like me to follow up? What works for you? Because as you can imagine in job search or as I'm exploring, uh, these conversations oftentimes can sort of trickle over time right. and or, or dissipate in importance. What would you like me to do to make it easier for you for us to continue this conversation? Okay. So the good news is you don't have to guess. You can ask and you can find that that short route. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so that's that's before the end of the, the meeting. So that's also a really helpful thing to do. And then do it do it. (laughs) If they say, well, you know, follow up with me in two weeks. You need to give me two weeks. I'm going to Paris. I'm going to go on vacation. There's going to be a massive snowstorm in Seattle. Um, I'm going to need some space. Um, And then making sure that you create systems to track and how you're going to follow up. Um, I'm a big believer in structure. I like structure. So I have our clients work off of an old timey Excel spreadsheet. I think people oftentimes do job search in their inboxes and in a folder, and that can get lost. Um, calendars are great if you're really adept at your calendar. I'm a big fan of OneNote, which is a Microsoft product, which is like a binder product, which has a 
capability of doing a lot of different things for job search. Um, we won't get into the technology of that, but following up is really important. And then the other thing I want to say is, again, with that mindset of making it really easy for that person is when you follow up, being really clear about what they said they wanted to do to help you. And then if they come back and say, yes, I want to introduce you to my colleague, Jessica, you say, oh, thank you so much, Mac. I really appreciate that. Before you do that, to make it easier for you to make that introduction, I've crafted this one paragraph summary of my experience and what I do and what I'm exploring and what I'm specifically intrigued by. And it will make it easier for you to make that introduction. I actually had uh, a job seeker do that for me about two weeks ago, and it, it made it so much easier I wish, for me to follow up. I wish up. I could say they were mine. I don't know who it is, well, but <laughs> uh, it does happen I'm occasionally. glad to hear it, that yeah, um, that yeah. is happening. Yeah, and this person in particular, it wasn't that hard to do. She just gave me a, a sentence or two about what she hoped to get from a conversation with four people that she'd identified that she wanted me to introduce her to. So, mm -hmm. uh, Isn't it? It's so nice when someone makes it so easy, yeah. easy for you because one of the biggest job, one of the biggest uh, mistakes job seekers make is that they make the assumption that that person really understands who you are and what you do. And when they get back to their desk to make that introduction, sometimes it, it isn't that clear to them. And then they are, again, it's an impediment to them moving you forward. And so sometimes they'll go to that mindset of, oh gosh, I have to create their message and craft their message for them. It's just easier for me to get up and go get lunch. Yeah. You know, so you want to remove that obstacle by cre creating this messaging and make it easier for people to be your champion. Well, excellent advice, Laura. Now tell us what's next for you. Well, uh, we continue to love to coach job seekers, and that is a thriving part of our practice, and we have people all over the world that were able to uh, provide our expertise in coaching, too. We, we just love that work. And then, interestingly enough, because so many of our coaches our former HR people, former recruiters, uh, we have started a thriving practice in HR for small business. So I spend a lot of my time running that practice, uh, running both practices, and uh, just absolutely adoring the coaches and consultants who work with Plum. And, and that, to me, being their biggest fan is uh, a big part of what I do. Well, I know our listeners can learn more about you and your colleagues and your company's services by visiting PlumSeattle.com. Now, Laura, of all the tips you've given us today, what's the one thing you want our listeners to remember when it comes to turning those connections into job search champions? The two things I tell people all the time is be clear and be appreciative. I have seen people lose further opportunity, further job opportunities, because they were not overt about appreciating what people would do for them. And it's heartbreaking. And people spend their time helping you and you will lose a champion if you are not appreciative, whether it be in the initial request for uh a coffee or a call and, and follow up after a discussion and follow up after a follow up. Uh, it is really amazing how people will remember that appreciative mindset. But the other, as I really laid out, I think I, I definitely um, said this over and over is clarity, clarity, clarity is so important because if you are not clear as to what you want and who you are and what you do, people will not be able to um, be your champion. Well, gratitude is a powerful force, as is clarity. Well, thank you, Laura. It has been a terrific conversation. A terrific conversation with Laura. Here's the main point that stood out for me. 
And that's the importance of making it easy for others to help you. She had a great example. If you want a meeting with someone and you're going to make that request, be ready to provide either boilerplate language or prepare something after the meeting that you can send to your connection so they don't have to think about why you want the meeting or what you have to offer or what you want to get from it. You can do that work for them. And when you do that, you're much more likely to get a response. Now, speaking of responses, let's talk about resumes. Uh, I often hear from job seekers who are disappointed that they haven't gotten an interview. And candidly, sometimes when they share their resumes with me, I see some pretty basic mistakes. I'm not alone in this. Employers, and we talk to them all the time at MaxList, tell us they see the same errors again and again in resumes. Don't make those mistakes yourself. Get our new guide. Don't make these eight killer resume mistakes. It's free, and you can download a copy today at maxlist.org slash resume mistakes. Well, thanks for listening to this week's episode of Find Your Dream Job. Join us next Wednesday. Our guest will be Suzanne Aronowitz, and she's going to explain why your job search isn't only about you. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job.